All right, so this particular one, looks like, looks like I've got screen sharing, right? Okay, this particular lab is set up with the Zoom lab as part of you guys' lab. And so, and if I'm, and if I have it straight, this one is your laboratory, that one right there. And when you click on it, it will take you to the laboratory materials. Um, under here, you've got a ton of resources. So if, if you are in my class, my 271 class, it's the same resources that you have over in the, in the class. For those of you in Dr. Gibbs class, it's a bunch of extra resources for you. So if you click on it, you will also have access to all of my OpenStax items, the video analysis tool, how to change the frames per second in the video analysis tool. There's references and guides. There's the cam scanner. There's the tutor.com link. There's how to do citations. You've got a whole host of materials that are in there. But it's the same, it's essentially the same materials that are in my other class. For laboratory resources, this is the link to the Google Docs for the template memo, the memo template. This is the link to the Microsoft Word documents for the template. I would like for you to save them as um, PDF files. It just makes life a lot easier because if it's an Apple, it has a tendency to do weird things. Um, then we will be using Firefox throughout the semester for a variety of different activities. We will, there's another one is the video analysis tool. So there's a host of different items that are there. The way I run lab, is you come to lab, we go over the material, I record it. So you have it recorded. A lot of these I've done and had it recorded before. So we've got it recorded. And then once you've got the data or you feel like you've got everything, you guys can leave. I, I don't make you sit here for two hours. Um, the other thing is, is like today, I'll have you out here by two because I have to be able to run for center at two. So that's one of the challenges that we have, but you've got a lot of different materials for today. So what we're doing today, the laboratory we're doing today is basically how to use Excel so that you can graph in Excel how to interpret some graphs and how to use the video analysis tool. And it's pretty straightforward. So if those of you who are, you know, skillful at using Excel, that it'll be pretty easy. If you didn't know or weren't aware, if you go to information technology, you can get your, if you go down here to save on software and technology products, you can get the, Microsoft Office 360 with your NOC email. So that's a free way to get Microsoft 360. Things that I really want to make sure that we do on our laboratories. So if I go over here and we're gonna, the laboratory we're gonna do today is this one, graphing um, using Excel and the video analysis tool. I have provided you an example laboratory memorandum it is not complete. In fact, it is missing something very important. It is actually missing references. And I am gonna be very persnickety. I expect to see references. And just about every lab you will have, you will reference the laboratory materials from Blackboard. So there's at least gonna be one reference for every lab that you have. I am not caring, use whatever citation or um, citation or reference that is on your discipline. Because I know some of you may be headed towards psychology and that's gonna be using APA. Some people might use MLA. I'm not being persnickety on that, especially in general physics one. I just want you to get used to using a reference format that you'd be using in the future. So whatever one works for you, I'm hunky-dory with, but 
The reason I'm doing this is because this is a big push now in the scientific community is to make sure things are properly referenced. If you followed all the hubbub with the Harvard president, she actually had to resign over self-plagiarism, which is a new, you know, how we reference our own, even our own work is becoming more and more important. So this particular example that I have provided for you is not the best, but it does give you the step-by-step -step for how this lab works. So it's a good example. It's just not the best example. So you, you, know, you know that there are some errors in here, but it does give you those examples. Um, you will submit, you'll submit the lab. Here it is, laboratory submittal and instructions. You're gonna submit it as a PDF. I have gone through and kind of reminded you everything that you have to do. So you've got kind of a checklist here for what all is due for this lab. But it, it's in there as well. And you have some historic vid videos for me. So questions about how I run lab grading. Mondays, I should be on Tonka Wall, I hope. Wednesdays, I should be on Tonka Wall, I hope. Um, although that can be entertaining this semester. Uh, Thursdays and Fridays, I'm on Enid, and hopefully I'll start, uh, starting next week, we'll be in Stillwater on Tuesdays. That's that's the current general plan, but uh, we've, got, we've got a variety of things happening. All right, so you have those introductions. You have two data sets, two graphing data sets. I've already downloaded them. One data set looks like this. And there's actually two sets of data in here. You've got three sets of data, force and mass, force and velocity, force and position. What you're gonna do is you're gonna plot. And so how you plot is you highlight the data. You go over to insert, you click on the charts, and you hit the scatter chart and it plots the scatter chart. You're looking, the question that you wanna answer on those, is there a correlation between force and mass, between force and velocity, or between force and position? I got scatter data. Don't think there's a relationship, so there's no correlation. This isn't a straight line, this isn't a parabola, this isn't some mathematical equation. So I would say there is no correlation between force and position. So you're gonna do those three graphs and you're gonna tell me, do you see a correlation? If so, what kind of correlation is it? Is it a line? Is it a quadratic? Just, you're gonna tell me what that is. Then you have these two sets of data. This is time and position. So we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna go in here and insert. We're gonna load our scatter chart and we got a scatter chart. What I want you to do for these two is look at the chart and describe the motion. So this could be a turtle, could be a toy, could be a person. I don't care what you're going to have moving. But this thing is going to start, whatever it is, we're going to start at a position of about five meters, um, five, you know, 4.5 meters. We're going to, because it's a curve, and we know that a curve on a position versus time plot is probably an acceleration. Our little thing is going to accelerate over that time until it gets to about 12 then it's gonna stop and it's not gonna move. Then we're going to go at a constant velocity backwards to our initial four meters, pick up something we dropped. We're gonna stop. Then we're gonna proceed, probably do a quick acceleration up to 32, stop for just a little bit, and then accelerate backwards till we come back. 
you're going to write a narrative. You're just going to describe the motion. You don't have the, the dots don't have to be connected. You're just describing the motion that that chart is giving you. And you get to do that for two of them. So something, nothing, nothing terribly difficult. You're just practicing because a lot of us haven't used Excel to graph before. The next one is a little more complicated because we're going to actually make connections. So I have four data sets. They're extraterrestrial planets. There's Titan. There's the moon. We've got Venus and Saturn. What we want to do is from this data, we want to obtain the acceleration due to gravity. Now I can do it two ways. We've got our three equations of motion, right? I've got my change in position is equal to my initial velocity times time plus one half the acceleration times time squared. So if I do a position versus time plot, I'm gonna get a quadratic. And that coefficient in front of time squared is gonna be acceleration divided by two. So I'm going to end up with that acceleration divided by two, and I'm going to be able to read it right off the graph. So if I do a position versus time plot, I'm going to go over here to insert, hit my charts, hit my scatter plot, voila, I got a nice, lovely little graph. If I go on and touch a dot and I right click with my mouse, it'll allow me to add a trend line. I can add a polynomial quadratic. I can have it display the equation on the chart. And now I've got this right here and I can close this out of the way so we can actually see that number. It says 0 0.678, 0 0.678. Well, that's my acceleration divided by two. So I have to multiply that by two to get gravity. So I'm going to get 1.3 something. And I go down to this little table and lo and behold, Titan is 1.3. So what you're going to do is you're going to graph those four things. And then you're going to tell me which of those match over there. And you're going to tell me this graph matched Titan. Because my acceleration, my reading my acceleration off the graph gave me that value. So you've got that, and you'll do that for four different ones. Make sense? That nods, good. The last thing you do is you'll go to your laboratory resources. And in here, In here, you have a video analysis tool. And we will be using this video analysis tool to actually do some experiments throughout the semester. When you click on it, this is what you're gonna get. We're going to use the sample video that is provided. We're gonna use this basketball video. Depending upon how your computer is set up, you may or may not necessarily immediately see the basketball video. You may only see this top part. You may have to scroll down to see the basketball video. I, we found that out for some reason. Certain certain browsers will hide the, the example videos. So when you click on the basketball shot, voila, we have a basketball. If you want to get and read the gory manual details up on these three dots, you can get the user manual but it is pretty self-intuitive as to how this works. Basically what you're gonna do is you're gonna do exactly what I'm doing and take a screenshot. Now you can take a screenshot through your computer and put it in your report. You can take a photograph with your phone and put it in your report. But basically what I'm wanting to see is did you go in and play with it? Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually, it allows you to set up a scale. So we're gonna use this door as our estimated scale here. And I'm gonna put in that that's 2.2 meters. When we do it, because what we're gonna do, the first time we're gonna use this video analysis tool is we're gonna drop an object. 
So we have meter sticks and two meter sticks. So we'll actually have actual something that we can use in our video as an actual reference. But for this, we're just practicing. So we're wanting that we want to go in there. So I'm going to put my 2.2 meters in. We're going to start the video as the basketball leaves the guy's hand. So because once it leaves his hand, there's no more acceleration on it other than gravity. Gravity's got the acceleration on it. We're going to set up our origin because we can move that around. And I can set up my origin on there. And then we can use our video analysis software to add data points. So basically, it will move one frame as we collect our data points. Voila. So I've got some data points and we can do those same curve fits on this data by hitting our graph options, apply curve fit. There's a linear one for the red. And if I apply a red, my coefficients for my linear are going to be with that red data. I can go in and do a apply curve fit and choose a quadratic for the, the blue data. And I can apply that and I can get my coefficients for the blue data. But once you get to this part, take a picture and put that into your lab report. Because I'm just wanting you to get in it and play with it to learn how to use the tools. It's very much like your general chemistry where you had to read the graduated cylinder, you had to weigh out 10 pennies. This is what we're doing. That's it's it's the physics version of weighing 10 pennies and doing it from this perspective. So there's a couple ways to keep track of you if you've done everything. One is in that checklist that's in where you turn in your report. The other is that example memo, because he did everything in that example memo that needed to be in there. So you have that. But again, it's not perfect. References were missing, but I want to make sure we start adding references. But I've been using it for a while before I got persnickety about references. But the Harvard, the Harvard, uh, when the president of Harvard ultimately loses her job over not referencing something, that's a little bit of a concern. So questions. I will post this video because I've been recording it, but you also have over here on the lab, if you go back up in your here, you have right there is how I did it over the summer. I think I've got last springs out there too. I think I even have last falls out there. <laughs> so you can you can see that how I did it several different times and how I talked through it. Questions? Hey, I'm gonna turn you loose. And feel, and, and by the way, this room, feel free that if there's nobody in this room, you can use it as a study room. Um, you, because you've got access to computers in here, you got access to a printer back there. So you guys can use it as a study room. So that works really well. 